Hey everyone, welcome. It's me again, Spencer. It's a new week, a new day. And today I'd like to take a look at something that seems kind of simple, but a lot of people struggle with, which is how to draw anything, how to approach a project or a design or illustration and how to just figure it out. So we'll take a look at some basic tips that I use to help me figure out how to draw simple and complex objects. Let's get started. <clears throat> okay, so if I'm looking at something that is complex or simple, the first thing I'm going to do is take a three-step approach to uh, defining what the thing is. So the first thing I'll do is ask myself, what is the form? And by form, I mean what's the three-dimensional representation of that object and how am I going to go about tackling and, and sketching that thing? The next is then to take that form to then divide it into its functional parts or its main bodies. So, for example, if I were looking at something like a hot rod, it has a main body, it has four wheels, there's a housing for the engine and a compartment for the driver where, where they sit. Those are the main functional elements. Then the next thing I do is beautify. And by that I mean finally add the details to my sketch or my illustration and not try to cram this all into the process at the same time because that can be really stressful trying to figure out all the details up front. So for example, if we take something like the hot rod I mentioned, really it's about figuring out what the main body is. So we know if you take a look at a picture, it's okay to look at reference. There's some sort of main body to a hot rod, for example. And I've sketched here in perspective a nice long main body. The next thing we know is that there are four wheels. So I can sketch those four wheels in. The front wheels are a little bit smaller than my back wheels. I'll sketch those in. Something like this. There's also a little bit of a taper from front to back. So now I've essentially cut this cube and now I'm transitioning from front to back here. And there's a little bit of a a curve to my body so I can throw in some section lines in for example all the way back here which allows me to then sketch in my canopy so now I can throw in a line like that another line like so maybe like so and I've got a roughed out main body for my hot rod Pretty simple, right? So just by understanding the main form, I'm able to rough out in perspective what I want this to look like. Let's say I want to sketch this in a different view. I can do kind of the same thing. So in perspective, let's taper this a little bit more toward the back. There's my main body. I've got one, two wheels. We can cut this main body and taper from front to back, like so. Throw in our cross section lines or big wheels toward the back, like so. And nice curved line. And using that section line we already had. I've now got some sort of daylight opening for my cabin, or cab, on this vehicle. Pretty cool, right? If I want to sketch this in a more forward view, kind of top down or directly, you know, more dynamic, I can sketch out my rect rect rectangular proportion wheels in the front, get my curve front to back, 
sections, cab, big wheels in the back. Okay. So these are really rough sketches, but hopefully you can see that by taking a, a simple approach to blocking out my form, dividing that form, and we haven't gotten to the beautify stage, but we can pretty much draw whatever. So let's take a, a good stab at drawing a hot rod in an interesting perspective. And I kind of like this view that I did here at the top left, so we'll blow that up a little bit. So what I'm doing, just so you know, is take a look at that picture again, and you'll see that we have some kind of proportion like this. We have a main body, we've got our cab, like so, we've got our wheel in the front, wheel in the back, and we can add some detail like our engine poking out there, maybe some exhaust pipe coming out the side and up the back. Okay, really simple. And then from the front, we've got probably wheel, wheel, front of the body, tapering back to that cap, like so, other wheel, and big wheel in the back. So methodically, we can, in perspective, draw one square, two square, connect the corners of my squares, like so, which if the square in the back is dynamic enough, will give us a nice dynamic base to work off. So. Establishing proportion, first thing, block out the form. If you want, you could block out the form on the top as well, like so, okay. And now I've got to block in my wheels. Some nice skinny tires here. And some more skinny tires over here. And I'm using pencil today, in case you're wondering. I'm using a, a nice, very thin pencil. As always, if you want to use some of the same materials or purchase some of the same materials, you can access links to buy those um, on the videos that I post. And if you actually purchase stuff using those links, it'll give me a little kickback so I can keep doing this and get better and better equipment. Okay, so to the front, remember we have to cut this cube a little bit and round it out. So I'm gonna start rounding out the front here and this cube. And I wanna have this actually cut back at an angle like so in the front. So I'm gonna take this, sketch out in the front a little bit and just kind of guesstimate, you know, where the bottom of this would be. Round that out. And so now I have a nice angled front to my hot rod sketch. Okay, let's get some axle in here and cut this body open like so. Just the body's coming down like that, right? If I offset the shape right in there, I can get a little bit of a detail on the front. Got my back wheel, just darken that up. I'm going to switch to a Prismacolor Premier to start darkening up some of these details. And if you remember the Prismacolor Premier, it's just a, a little thicker lead on this pencil. So it's a little easier to get some, some nice dark lines. And the way our eyes work really is whenever we see contrast, we kind of focus on that, on that thing that is contrasting. And um, our brains naturally just pull out the detail 
that was there. So all these construction lines kind of fade away. All right, so let's work on this canopy here just a little bit. Um, I know this is a, a little bit more complex of a form. However, I'll show you as well how we can do this with something a little simpler as well. But I just wanted to show you the power of just thinking through a problem before we tackle that problem. So right where the engine pokes out, I can just sketch a square, sketch the frame out in perspective, like so, and then start to round it out. Okay, so now the engine's kind of poking out there. And it seems crazy because you can't really see in front of the engine, but that's okay. All right, and let's do some fins on the front. Always keep your pencil sharp. Got my trusty pencil sharpener with me here. Get the outline of your design kind of worked in here, like so. Back wheel. And our front wheels. And maybe from the engine compartment here that I'm cutting in, we've got some uh, cylinder heads poking out and also here's a little exhaust that we're going to run to the back. Okay, so that pokes out right there. Um, and we can keep going and getting and get uh, more and more detail with this and jumping between the phases of divide and beautify, you know, back and forth, because we've already established the form, and I'm just kind of cycling between these two parts of the process to then pull the design, or the illustration, rather, from the, the mess of construction lines that we had. And if you're having trouble with your construction lines, just remember light till you get it right. So if you need to sketch a little lighter, whether it be with a gray marker, or if it means easing up off the pencil just a little bit so that you can uh, get those really light lines in. Okay. Light till you get it right, just remember that. Okay. Um, you can see here pretty quickly we have a, a quick design, quick sketch rather, of a hot rod like vehicle. Okay. Um, with a little bit more time, we could start to add some shading. So, for example, on this Prismacolor Premier, I could, right on this point of uh, maximum curvature on that surface, just turn my pencil to the side on some of these areas, and I can start to shade in um, this back wheel, for example with my Prismacolor Premier on the side. I can shade in the back wheel fairly quickly. Same thing on the other side here. And if you're not sure about how to shade cylinders, just watch uh, some of my previous videos where I talk about that, how to shade a cylinder, how to get that right, looking good. And there we can see just with pretty minimal effort we're able to get some shading in on these wheels. Now the nice thing about shading on the side of this pencil is I'm actually sharpening up, sharpening up the tip of the pencil as well. So that when I go to draw lines, those lines are nice and crisp. OK, 
Okay, and with a little bit of line weight here in the right places, just really quick with the pencil, you can pull out some more of these details. So right here on the front grill, a little bit of shadow in these areas. And that's gonna help communicate depth. Oh, broke my tip there. So right in here, that's gonna help communicate depth and a change in surface direction. Right in that little detail of the grill. Okay, so as you can see, pulled out some detail, with a little bit more pencil work here and contrast added. And again, this is a very very rough sketch but hopefully you get the picture you can sketch anything as long as you take kind of a methodical approach now this was this was kind of a complex example of pulling form out of simple perspective form so let's, let's do something a little bit simpler um, i'm kind of known to sketch printers <laughs> so i just i'm just going to go ahead and show you my process of how I sketch a printer, something simple, and use the same technique to pull form out of simple perspective and simple blocks. So let's say I'm going to sketch some sort of multifunction printer. What I might do is start with a rough proportional representation of what the wireframe of that printer might be. And I'll even draw through on the back because I am using a pencil today. So now that I have that form, I can start to divide. And divide means anything from adding transitions to extending my form to cutting in. So here, I'm, it's almost like I'm, I'm cutting into this, this cube just a little bit. Okay. And now you can see how jumping off and leaving that cube I'm starting to break out and create some functional details for this multifunction print unit. So just with a few lines here, breaking in, this is where my paper would go in, for example. If I decided to load from the top, and maybe there's a tray that's at an angle so I can do this funky little trick where I break the perspective a little bit. Okay, so now it seems like this line's shooting off that way and everything else seems to be converging. That's okay. I'm showing that that's actually at an angle. And if they're at an angle, then these two need to converge. So there's a slight convergence on the uh, distance of those lines because it's going off to an auxiliary vanishing point. Next, if there's some sort of door on the back, it opens up, we can sketch a line in, sketch this door in here, like so, just real quick. So again, starting with the cube, you can really break things up and quickly come up with simple designs for products or illustrations. And, th and this technique could apply to anything from uh, an architectural study. So if you're going to be drawing a building, you, know, you choose the appropriate perspective for that sketch. And then from there, once you have your form, you can divide and beautify your sketch. Okay, so haven't applied any line weight to this yet, or at all rather. Um, I could jump to markers at this point, I could jump to my Prisma Code Premiere, but hopefully you get the idea that this is really a simple and easy way of just thinking about what you're drawing. A friend of mine told me once, his name is Johnny Jensen, amazing kid, he said, learning to draw is learning to see. And that is so true. If you can see and understand the world around you, how light works, how objects work, how we as humans create things, drawing becomes so much easier. Thanks again for watching and be sure to tune in tomorrow when we'll talk about another exciting sketch topic. If you haven't yet, subscribe to the channel. That way you'll get an email notification whenever I post a video and you'll be the first to know. Or you can follow me on Instagram. I am at sketchaday.com 
or on Facebook. It's facebook.com slash sketchaday. And that's where I kind of interact with people and um, respond to your comments and so forth. Thanks again. Much appreciated. And see you guys next time on Sketchaday. Thank you.